Jesus be the fulfillment of God's promise to King David. I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and his throne shall be established forevermore. leaders said that Jesus did his works by the power of said that Jesus did his works by the power of Satan, or Beelzebub. of Jesus did Abraham Lincoln use in his speech on slavery? divided against itself cannot stand. says a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against thee will not be forgiven. against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. give account thereof in the day of judgment. Jesus said that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now our professor, Dr. Ward Williams. Verse 38 down through um, verse 42. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, 
Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil, an adulterous generation seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Here we have an illustration of the interdependence of the two testaments. We have three references here. We have a reference to the prophet Jonah. We have a reference here to, uh, to Solomon uh, and to the city of Nineveh. Now here Jonah's sign was that he was swallowed by the great fish. It amuses me that the various items in the Old Testament which had been bo most brought into question and most relegated to the area of myth by uh, some of the critics, Jesus apparently went out of his way in anticipation of this criticism and placed his approval upon the truth of this. Jesus said, Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, the whale. He gave his approval to that. If you want to join those who criticize the Old Testament, you are out of step with Jesus. That's all I have to say on that. He goes on to say that that is a parable or a figure in the Old Testament of the fact the Son of Man is going to be in the grave between the crucifixion and the resurrection for three days and three nights. And he says the men of Nineveh are going to be better off in the final judgment than the generation Jesus lived in because when Jonah finally arrived there after his terrifying experience and cried to God out of the belly of the whale and was delivered, um, apparently somebody said one time that after three days even the whale was sick of Jonah. And uh, but when Jonah got to Nineveh and preached, the people of Nineveh repented. And Jesus said, I preached, and you've not repented. And then he says that the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, came to see Solomon. And she came, but you haven't come to hear me. And then speak again about this matter of, the, of this evil spirit. He said, an unclean spirit who's been cast out of a man goes through waterless places restless places and says I will return to the house which I came when he comes back he finds it empty swept and put in order the King James says garnished and and then he goes and brings with him seven other spirits more evil than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first this extremely solemn solemn statement is a warning, friend, that once you have been delivered from your past, once you have been forgiven, once you become a follower of Christ, you must fill your life with things that are good. Because if you do not put into your life total reliance upon Jesus, a total submission to him, new things, new things will come in and take the place of the old things from which you were delivered. What is the point of delivering a man from alcoholism and delivering him over in the hands of covetousness or of immorality? There's no point. Until the man is delivered from one form of sin and is delivered to serve the living God, there's no point in just swapping sins. And this is what Jesus here is warning us about. 